Hey, what's up guys? We are back for part two of the Sit Go series. I guess part four, maybe? It's the next part. It's carrying on from the video that hopefully you guys just watched. If you didn't watch the previous video, um, you haven't missed too much. Uh, we've just started here in a six max um, 11 sweeps cash tournament. We have picked up a few chips from our 1,000 chip starting stack. We're still at the low blind levels. And on the right hand side, we have just started the three sweeps cash uh, nine-handed game. As I said in the previous video, I don't think there's going to be too much difference in play between the three sweeps cash game and the ten sweeps cash game. Uh, if we bust these tourneys uh, before the video is finished, we will bring in some more one, uh, more sitting goes for you guys to, to, to watch here. Um, we open, we get caught by Sweet Tooth, which obviously is not ideal given he's short stat. It's kind of an awkward post-op situation. I don't think we want to bluff here, um, just because he's going to be jamming so often. We're going to just check fold. So on the left hand side we've got a regular speed tournament with 10 minute blind levels. On the right hand side we are in a turbo tournament with the 5 minute blind levels. The right hand side gets to a very very short stack situation a lot quicker than the table uh, on the left hand side. So we're going to have to keep an eye on things over here on the right. Uh, with the ace queen suited if we get an open obviously off either of the 10 or the 11 big blind stack here, we will just be rolling with a hand. I think if Spoon Diggity uh, opens against us, we're just going to be shoving. I mean, we only have uh, 20 big blinds ourselves, right? Pretty clear shove now. We do get action from the button, and he raised calls the King Jack. We're looking for a hold. It's a good start. Just got to fade that 10. And we do so. Nice. If we move into second place in chips, Spoon Diggity and myself are uh, currently looking good to make the money. Obviously, Spoon Diggity can apply quite a lot of pressure to me since I really don't want to have to be calling off many hands against him. This is a very, very clear shove, blind v blind for 11 BBs. And we take it down. So top two getting paid here uh, in the 11 sweeps cash event. I'll grab those pairs for you. Obviously, uh, the main thing in a spin, uh, in a sit and go rather, always to be aware of the structure, always be aware of the pairs. Second place here, taking 20, and first place taking 40. On the three sweeps cash right hand table, we got a limp, a limp, and a limp which is not uncommon. We're not going to open here. Um, really not a hand I would want to raise and call off against either of the players to my left and we're not really incentivized to play pots against Spoon Diggity in the big blind given he has us covered. He does call off with the 10-7 and flop trips. Uh, this is not a call of course but it's going to make our job a little bit easier because we're now three-handed with a shorter stack um, here on the bubble. We do get the walk, unfortunately. We wanted to call off from Mr. Sink. We wouldn't have called off against Spoon Diggity just because um, Mr. Sink's a much shorter stack. But it would be a mistake for us to go broke on the bubble against him. We're going to call here with the sixes. Very small rejam. And it's not often you get it in with sixes and you have them completely dominated. But we do. And we pick up the chips. The bad thing for us on this bubble is obviously Mr. Sink is going to be jamming wide. But Spoon Diggity does like a call. Um... This time he gets it in good, which is obviously favorable. Just looking for that hold. And we get it. Nice. Alright, so we made the money. That's 20, uh, 20 locked up. We're looking to take first place of 40, though. So we're going to put some heads up working against your man here. I have just brought in a sit and go off screen so that um, when we inevitably win this heads up, of course, we can bring it in and you guys don't have much of a delay in the sweat. Keep the video nice and flowy with some action. I think it's fine to just take a stab here. We've got a gut shot. Just going to take a bet with our nine high. Not a turn I want to barrel against this guy. 
just going to give it up. Definitely going to implement a raising strategy. Um, we're going to call here with the jack and the five. We should be good to take a showdown. He leads with the king and the four. Typically, I wouldn't be folding any pair and some ace highs to that lead. Pretty much every ace high. Well, definitely every ace high. We fold the three x out of position. I would like to think we have a pretty significant edge over this player. Just going to hopefully uh, not run too badly and turn around this 2-1. to one. Let's see what we can do. Definitely going to come in for the 3-bet here. I mean, there is a temptation if he raises just to shove because I think he, he kind of wants to... He called off with the 10-7 before. I think he's a very gambly player. But uh, once he limps, we're just going to raise. We could have a consideration to check here. Um, I'm not going to. I'm just going to try and build some value. We'll go for a smaller bet. We're going to try and induce a raise some, some of the time. I think now it's just a pretty clear case of bet turn shove river. We don't want him to pot control anything. He's most likely going to be quite corly. So we'll just go slightly less than 400 so we can jam the river. He does fold the turn though. Eight's obviously a very strong hand. Be looking to raise and uh, call off if he shoves or, or jam over his, over his three bet. We will just be sending this one. And he min three bet folds. I think top pair heads up against this guy is going to be pretty strong. It's a pretty draw heavy board. Just considering whether we want to check raise, get it in. And uh, against him, I think we probably do. So we're gonna we're gonna roll with it. And he has the king queen, which is a little unfortunate. I think our player is fine though. On such a draw heavy board. If it was a little drier, uh, I don't think we would. Um check raise call off, but I think against him on that board, I think it's fine. We end up in second place in the tourney. We take home 20 for our 10 buy-in. And I appreciate this is exactly the same table you're seeing right now, but as if by magic, we have another 10 plus 1, this time a 9-handed game. Uh, but we won an early pot, we're up to 1,400 chips. This is a 10-minute blind sit and go, as is the, uh, the one on the right-hand side over there, sorry, is a 5-minute blind uh, sit and go. But the left-hand side, again, should give us a little bit more room to... Play some post swap poker where hopefully we have an edge. I said we have an edge and we just get tooled by the king queen, but again, I think it's fine. It's just the top of his range or close to the top of his range. He's going to be stacking off with some jack x, I think. He's going to be stacking off with some 9 10, some heart draws, some queen 10 are going to continue. Uh, maybe even some 8 9 are going to continue to the check raise, even if they don't shove. Just think we should be looking to max value against weaker opponents there. Whew. Quite warm today. Hopefully we we run just as hot, hey? Right side we're down to one, two, three, four, five, six, seven players. Lost the two players here. Three will get paid in the nine handed nine handed sit and goes here. Pets are as follows. Let me get rid of this. 18 for third, 27 for second, 45 for first. So uh, 1.8 binds, 2.7 binds, 4.5 binds. So this one will be 13.50, right, for first place. Let me test my maths. 13.50 for first in the three sweeps cash, 8.1 for second and 5.4 for third. We do see an all-in of ace three versus seven eight. Seven eight hitting the rail. And we're down to six-handed. Half the field will get paid, half will not. We want to be in the top half, of course. We get a steal through with ace ten of hearts.
Ah, our old friend Spoon Diggity back in the 11 sweeps cash. Sit and go on the left hand side. Uh, we're going to fold here. This man makes uh, the nut straight of the river. Gets paid against the goblin. Who comes in for a limp despite being uh, incredibly short stat now. Just less than 5 BBs. It's going to allow us to take a flop I guess which is a not an uh, unreasonable thing. Apparently not. We fold of course. And the goblin limps and folds. Which is certainly a mistake. On the left hand table uh, G Street who we played with before as well comes in for a limp and a limp. I think our hand is probably robust enough to ISO on the button. We're going to attempt to do that. Position is power and all that. And we're going to raise it pretty big. On the right hand side. Oz Poker has requested more time. We get it through with the 10s. A plan with the A7 will be to open, call off the goblin's shove. We get it through on the left, which isn't the end of the world. I think we've just been raised to call off the goblin here. Apparently he's going to fold. And we're pretty happy to take a flop. We are going to bet. Big blind range here is going to be very, very wide. So we're just going to try and deny equity here. Ace five, of course, going to be the best hand a reasonable amount of the time. Just uh, capitalize on the dead money in the middle. Deny equity to any hands you might have. I think it's going to be the easiest way for us to win the pot. Just uh, continue with the c-bet. In general, we want to be c-betting versus the big blind there. Quite wide. I think this will be strong enough to raise call against the goblin. And again, taking a flop in position, not the end of the world. A little bit of a different kind of board. I still think we're going to bet to deny equity though. And we just pick it up again, which is good. Continue to chip up here. We'll fold the 7-5. And we'll fold the 8-4. So we definitely know that, uh, well, we've definitely played with uh, G Street before and Spoon Diggity, but I think they're definitely both weaker players. There's no one who's really, I've seen in the, the four sit and go videos we've made on Global Poker, there's really nobody I've seen who I think, you know, this guy is in control, definitely knows what he's doing. Not to say that there are not going to be some of those players on this site, but uh, we definitely haven't run into any of them yet, or if we have, I haven't. Uh, I had a big enough sample to recognize it, but of what I've seen of Spoon Diggity and G Street, who are the only players that I recognize uh, from having played against before, they're definitely, they've definitely made mistakes. I mean, Spoon Diggity making the call with the 10 7 um, all in in the previous game, and G Street was limping off a very short stack and, and continues to do so. With the Goblin all in here, if it gets sold to us, we will make the call for the extra one big blind. A pretty awful flop for us drawing dead on the turn but uh, I think we should be calling almost any two cards there for the extra BB closing the action not going to look to do anything adventurous with the 10-5 offsuit and likewise on the left hand side uh, with 5-7 of diamonds we see Brian limping in with his 5.5 uh, BB stack or whatever it is limp 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 everybody wants to see a flop apart from me and Ozpoker are going to take, take a Sit on the sidelines for this one. Right hand side, clear fold. Someone in the chat on a net just said, Are you the British guy that makes the YouTube videos? Hi, mate. But it's showed up on which table is this? A net? But it's on the chat in the lobby? Oh, that was from the previous one. No, 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 it's from this one. I 
Well, Rafi, who I think is now eliminated, I can confirm that you were in one of the YouTube videos that was made by the British guy. Me. Unless there's another British guy making sit and go videos on global poker, I'd be surprised. I would be surprised. We see an all in on the left hand side from Brian. Finally, no, not limping anymore. He's going for it. All in with the queen and the jack. Get some help on the river to stay alive. Pretty unfortunate pot for Mikey to lose here. 600 chips sliding away from him. Good enough for Dor, but not good enough for me. We're falling in the 10 2 offsuit under the gun. There may be an opportunity for us to defend our big blind here to a min open. I don't think that would be too crazy. On the right hand side, if the goblin shoves, we're going to fold this time. He decides to try and see a flop. He has limp folded before, so it's not always going to be like super strong trap hands here. I guess we'll take a flop. And on the left hand side, we're going to stab with our gut shot in a limped pot. We may bet again, actually. We pick it up. I don't think we're going to stab here. 10 high. Very poor equity against anything. Don't expect him to fold too often given his short stack. We're just going to give it up. And likewise given up with the 8-3 offsuit and the 9-3 offsuit. Both trash hands. Don't play these hands, folks. Ever. Well, never say never. Oops, said it twice. The goblin, potentially at risk here, decides to fold. We are six players remaining, still half the field looking to get paid, half not. At the moment, we are not quite in the top half. Fourth in chips. Not going to get involved with the 8 2. Especially not against the biggest stack in the big blind. We will be getting involved with the ace queen, though. Gonna start with the raise. Naturally, if the goblin goes all in, we'll be going all in. If we get three bet, I'd imagine we're shoving here. Pretty reasonable board for us. We can definitely consider um, a bet here to deny equity. Your man Shizzy leads for 60 chips. We are gonna see a turn. Echo Cancer coming in for the raise. We're gonna get out of dodge. I don't really see, uh, he shows the three. Nice hand, mate. I don't really see any incentive to raise Shizzy. Uh, he can definitely have some better hands. Um, and in raising, I guess we're folding out some war stuff, denying it equity. But I think um, given he can still have very strong hands and we have Aqua to act behind us, it's a little bit too risky. Because Aqua can certainly, having called from the small blind, definitely has a little stronger range than the big blind player. Although he did show, what was it, like Jack 3 or whatever he had. So maybe... He's calling too wide of a range there. Almost certainly. And I think his raise with a three is a little thin. Most likely a mistake to go that big, that sizing, into two players. Kind of hard for me to have stronger, I guess, when I flat call. Six, seven, getting it all in here and gets her on the turn. We will lose the goblin and go into five-handed play with three getting paid. Blinds are up. We got twelve point six of them. Alright, this could very well be a hand that we're going to be getting involved in. Definitely is blindly blind. Sadly, we get walked out. Not the end of the world, but uh, I guess we had a pretty 
Pretty strong hand. For 12 BBs. Back to the 8, 3, and 10, 4. Muck. So into the muck they shall go. Yet to lose a player on the left-hand side. We're still nine-handed. As I said, 10-minute uh, blind levels. It's a little bit slower. Mikey is all in. Oz poker with the limp and a call with the threes. And we're still nine-handed. The kings... For the hold, we got an unfortunate DC for Shizzy on the right-hand side. We'll definitely be keeping an eye on that, because that's going to change the bubble quite significantly if that player is uh, disconnected. Obviously, they'll be pretty hard for me to steal, just because the biggest stack's directly to his left, so like, I can't really do too much. I think we're going to raise here. I guess we should just shove, right? 12 BBs. I guess for 12 big blinds, we should just be all in. And uh, attempt to steal up to 1400. I think it's a pretty clear jam. Even clearer jam if Shizzy's having some connection problems. As bad as that sounds. We may occasionally get him to fold. Something that he shouldn't if his internet's given out on him. Is that bad? No. Everybody's going to take that edge, right? I don't think it's a particularly like, huge edge anyway, but... If someone's disconnected to your left, you're always going to steal their blind. Alright, we get it through. Nice. It does put a second. It's really close right now between all of us four. Hopefully we'll be able to play the bubble a little better than our opponents. So some mistakes that they might make is getting, uh, you know, not really understanding people are going to get knocked out. Or they'll be, you know, shouldn't be playing any pots to look for other people to get knocked out. I think limping uh, and things like that is going to be a mistake. We definitely don't want to be calling off too light. Um, Aqua Cancer seems to have the right sort of idea jamming here. I don't think we can call. Even though our hand's likely miles ahead of his range for shoving, um, it just seems bad to call off when you have a stack shorter than yours here at a potential uh, DC here as well. It's a little awkward for us given that we are, you know, jamming our stack into the big stack. Um, so, you know, he can call off a lot easier. So every steal of the big blind we make, it has to be against the bigger stack where, for example, Shizzy can steal against the two shorter guys. Um, I guess we take a flop here. I don't really want to jam over this limp range. I don't know what it is. And I wonder if we can get away with a really cheap steal here. I'll take that as a no. It is, of course, better for us that Aqua picks up the chips rather than Shizzy. Show us the straight. You got it, mate. You got it. I'm going to jam 10 BBs from the button here. The Queen 10 suited. Uh-oh. We are looking for a jack. Or a spade. No dice on that one, team. We end up uh, going out in 5th place. I think our jab is fine. 10 BBs from the button. But we do finish 5th. We're on the bubble now. So we'll definitely stick. Uh, we've only got a 5 minutes left of the video. Or I guess we'll just finish the video until the table on the left hand side plays out. But definitely worth us sticking around. Um, to checking out how this bubble's going to play. And just picking up some strategy. Advice. Some pointers. Tips. Tricks. Um, even though I'm not going to be involved. I can certainly find some value in the sweat. Obviously, at this point, 
Aqua should be using his stack to pick up as many chips as he can from his opponent. None of these guys are going to want to call off at this point, so he should be shoving an insanely wide range into all of them, given that none of them want to call. I mean, obviously, Rack is most incentivized to do so, but even so, they might feel like they can, you know, hang on and hope someone else gets cool. So I think Aqua should just be stealing blinds really, really liberally. I mean, if he loses 1k, it's definitely not the end of the world. He might have to slow down, you know, after the first uh, double up he gives out. I say gives out, you know, he might fall victim to double up, but he should just be looking to shove. Like, I, I would say, honestly, almost any two cars into Shizzy here. Limping definitely going to be a mistake. Shows the 9-2. I mean, at least he stabbed the flop. Just going to fold on the left-hand side. Down to 14 big blinds, but uh, not in too bad shape. What are we, second in chips? Okay, so he bets, calls off with queen 10. Um, again, I, I just... This has just got to be a jam pre-flop. Queen 10 suited um, into these players. Bet calling off is kind of giving out the double up for, you know, with, with a lot less equity. Sometimes the players will be unhappy. Alright, so we see a ship and a pretty easy call for the ace jack. And that'll take us into the money here. So, again, a lot less interesting now, sadly. But we'll keep it up. Left hand side, we've got seven players left. Three are going to make the monies. We are not going to do anything with our two and our four. So, we've got 9.3, five big blinds, nine big blinds, two big blinds. And then a couple kind of similar stacks to us to the right and table Frank. TB Frankel looks a little like Jack Nicholson with a pretty reasonable chip lead at the moment. This video probably going to go a little longer than 30 minutes, hopefully, because uh, obviously if it goes 30 minutes, it means I bust within the next two. But hopefully we'll go over 30 because it'd be nice to finish this, this season, this series, if you will. It'd be nice to finish with a win. Mikey v. Jake Spooky. Spooky check on the river. Mikey. Has a bet. Takes it down. The gift of 6-4 in the big blind. Not a lot we're going to do. I guess if G Street shoves 230, we're calling if everyone folds. Guess we're gonna fold now. Ace ten versus the king and the nine. It's a pretty sick river. Jake Spooky gone from a bad even stack to me to a half hour stack. We're trying to slide in here for 50 chips. We do get to take a flop. I don't think we want to stab into two players. Especially not with the uh, 400 chip stack here. I think any equity is just going to jam. Obviously, he's going to miss the flop a lot of the time. We've got to be somewhat aware of uh, Frankel's limp here, though. He does bet and win. Just going to fold the jack nine on the button. Three people get paid, seven people remain. We have 12 big blinds. And we're folding the nine and the four. Nujar commits 200 chips, he'll take a flop, save the 155 for a rainy day. I can't imagine any hand that shouldn't have, you know, obviously calling here. Huge mistake, leaving 155 chips behind. Should be just all in pre-flop or not, not playing at all. If he falls here, it's a complete disaster, but he doesn't. And lucky enough to flop trips against the ace-queen behind him. 
Just wanted to see a flop, you know. He knew uh, he knew the three of a kind was coming. Finds a double up to uh, more than a double up, rather to eleven hundred chips. Things are going to get pretty busy around here in the next five minutes, since we have a lot of short stacks. Speaking of getting busy, right inside we see all in six four versus queens. That is a six six turn, and the six and the four is going to ship it all against top set and win the tournament. Congrats, Aqua Cancer. Takes it down. Hopefully that's been about 10 minutes. I do wish I'd had a glass of water before I start the video though because um, I feel like I'm making this video trudging through the Sahara. It's quite warm. Quite dehydrated. But we have a tournament to win. There's my top poker tip of the day. Always have water on hand, stay hydrated. A hydrated brain is a smart brain. I mean I don't think it I don't think it's hot enough to affect our decision making process. But it is warm. I digress. Should be a spot with Frankel uh, should be stabbing a lot of his hands here. Just put the pressure on the two shorter stacks in the blinds on a board that they're gonna miss invariably, and he does do that. Doesn't need to go big. Jack threw off, definitely not looking to get involved in any way, shape, or form. I will take a walk. Dare I say, I will beg for one. Fold, fold, fold. Not even going to defend for the min open here. Certainly getting out of the way now. G Street is all in for 3.6 VPs. Is going to get called off by the King 10, looking to hold in a flip. I guess we're rooting for King 10 here, get closer to the, to the uh, money bubble. But no dice, he wins a flip, back in the game. Ace nine, blind be blind, we will shove. I think we're gonna jam over a limp. Definitely gonna jam over two limps. Three limps. You better believe we're gonna ship it all in here. We definitely still have fold equity. Uh, given the like distribution of stat sizes, there's gonna be a lot of limp folds, honestly. I think if Oz Poker jams, we might even go for it. He can certainly be jamming a very, very wide range. Uh, he does fold. I think it's a pretty easy all in for us now. If everybody folds, we increase our chip stat by 50%. Um, and I wouldn't imagine they limp stronger hands than Ace-9 too much, so seems to be an incredibly profitable situation for us to jam. Mikey into the time bank, though. Folds. Frankel. Calls. And has limped the king and the jack. We are in good. That is a jack, though. We're going to need some help. Help that is not... All right, well, we can only make good decisions and get it in with the best hand, and that is exactly what we did. Sadly, our hand did not hold up, and we finish in seventh place. Um, so that was a showcase of uh, Sit and Goes on GlobalPoker.com. You can head to GlobalPoker.com today, and you can deposit uh, from the U.S. You can cash out um, within the U.S. as well, playing in sweeps cash. So be sure to check that that out if you're interested in, in uh, playing in those games, which were indeed very soft. I've been Spraggy for PokerVIP.com, and uh, thanks for joining me. Hope you enjoyed these videos. Be sure to jump into the comments, uh, ask any questions, etc., etc. We look forward to seeing you again.